I just kept on going like life how it was until I realized that I was like 20 years old and had like no sex drive. And so I go to the doctors and he's like, man, your testosterone doesn't exist. This is the reason why. What was the brand like? Like what was the plan back when you started YouTube? Christian Guzman was my idol. You know him? Christian, yeah, Christian yeah, yeah, Guzman, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. So I always saw him do like amazing stuff on YouTube and I was like, I could do that. And I'm like, there's no English person doing it. So then I was like, I'll do it. And, and so you had a totally aesthetic basis for, for training. Like it was yeah. aesthetics only. Right? Yeah, I did bodybuilding. And it? I was severely ill. Really? That's why I don't like, that's why I don't talk about it as much because I dieted down. So I, I did this competition called Mr. University when I was at university yeah. and I dieted down and like won the show. But then mentally I got into this position where I was like, man, I'm so lean. And then I didn't eat again. And luckily Pantomo hit. She taught me how to eat again because I stayed too lean for too long and messed up all of my like hormones. So that's like a time in my life that I was very proud of and then I, I went into a, a bad place. That's why I had to shift away from bodybuilding. And yeah. So, yeah. So I actually have brought this up in a lot of different podcasts, body dysmorphia. Yeah. It's something that I never actually de dealt with at all because I was always performance based. Yeah. So in high school and in college, I was playing sports. I was always an athletic guy. I don't even honestly feel like it was dysmorphia. I just feel like I got into such a routine of how I ate and how I just, you know, that's how I looked, that I didn't understand the underlying physiological effect that it was having on my body until it was too late. Yeah. You know, because when you diet down for a show, you can do it in a healthy-ish way, especially when you're, when you're natural, you can get to those low body fat levels, but once you've done the show, you have to come out of that. And kind yeah, of you just didn't let yourself I just, out. I just didn't, I just kept on going like life how it was until I realized that I was like 20 years old and had like no sex drive and like yeah. you're at university, this peak at this time of like oh, American yeah. pie. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You're like, no, that, that, that should be the peak of your your male yeah. like. And so I, I, I'm like tired all the time and everything. So I go to the doctors and he's like, "Man, your testosterone doesn't exist." Like, yeah. and this is the reason why is because you're not eating. So that was like a dark time. That's why bodybuilding wow. for me has been like a past where I'm happy. I learned about it and I, I did what I did at the time, and like. You learn from everything you do, yeah. but like that was that's why I switched over to CrossFit and performance because I was like I need to get away, and I need to just eat and just train. And you found that that was easier to do through CrossFit, yeah. and and it, and it mentally helped you out a lot just yeah. to like switch to performance. Yeah, man, that is a crazy story. I think I don't think I've told that properly in depth. Yeah, to anyone really. Well, well, because not many people have gone. I feel like uh, maybe that. I think a lot of bodybuilders are too stubborn to go into performance. Because say that you do have a, a, an aesthetic physique, now you want to go, you, I guess maybe they go into to powerlifting or something like that. But it's like, you don't want to give up what you're already good at. Yeah. Um, and I imagine that it's hard to give up what you're already good at for health, you know? Um, bodybuilding is a strange one, isn't it? You know, dude, like, it is, it you look with my head. It really to the does. the general public, you look healthy. But it's like so far from healthy when you do it like if you do it competitive. Like if you go into the gym every day, it's very good for you. I definitely recommend it, but just. I, I, I just had, I had uh, Derek from More Plates, More Dates. Yeah. You know, um, I had him and we, and we talked a lot about this, man. And I guess your, your issue was more like, this is the way that I'm gonna just live my life, yeah. was this diet in this way. Yeah. But there had to have been an image associated with that, right? Like, it had to have been a body image thing. Yeah. Well, like, at the time, especially, like, it was the peak of aesthetic times. You know when you used to go to all the trade shows and it was all, all the supplements everywhere. I feel and like Gymshark was blowing up at that point. With their nipples hanging out, you know, and it was like, everyone was wearing fake tan. And I was one of those people too that you knew people were doing steroids and stuff, but you, you're just kind of naive to it. Yeah. So like, you look at some people that were role models at the time and you're like, nah, you look back now and you're like, you're definitely doing stuff. But like, when I was there at the time, I'm like, no, no, I can achieve that. You right. know, and it's like. But I think that's cool though. I think like for 18 year old, 20 year old kid to be like, you know what, f it, I can do it, you know? Yeah. I, I, I struggle with the idea of 
everyone being open about use and then saying that that's the ultimately the best thing. Like, yeah. is omission better? Is lying better? Or is just complete openness better? Yeah. And I would, I would not know how to answer that right. question. It's, it's hard because- I wish every, no, actually I do. I wish everyone was honest. So, but I wish everyone that was on it would say, yeah, I'm on it. Uh, and I wish everyone that- But then, but then, would, would kids not see that and just be like, oh, okay, well, I'll just do TRT at 18 or whatever, you know? It's like, that's, that's, uh, the one, that's the one thing where I'm like, is it a net positive for The Rock to say he's on drugs? Like, it, does it really help that much? And I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. It's like... Um, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. Mar uh, Mark Bell said, if we, if, if we tell kids, if we're open about our steroid use, and then we say, be knowledgeable and don't do it, it's like saying, yeah, hey, don't go to the bar and get drunk, even yeah. though last weekend I went to the bar, got drunk, and I pulled a smoking hot chick, and yeah. we had sex. It's well like, done. yeah, so like, the kid, the kid's gonna be like, uh, that whole not going to a bar thing and drinking thing, I wanna do that, yeah. right? Because, you know, so you see someone like The Rock, he's like, kids, don't do drugs, because if you do, you could potentially end up like me, who's a multimillionaire with this body, like, yeah. literally the most famous person. And I act the same in every movie. Yeah. yeah, it's the same in every single movie. Went from that to CrossFit and CrossFit, then I fell in love with weightlifting. And do you think you're gonna stick with weightlifting for a longer period of time? Do you have unfinished business or what? Oh, one million percent. So what I realized is I, I don't get satisfaction from winning anything. So like last year I won the British title and I it, the satisfaction was this big because I had numbers in my head that I wanted to hit and I didn't get anywhere near what I knew I could do and it, but I would rather go to a small meet and, heat and hit the numbers that I really want to hit. So in my head right now, I want to snatch over 330 on the platform. Pounds. One, oh, okay. So 150-ish. 150. 147? No, it's 150. I thought 150 is 332. Oh, it's 330. Yes, 330. And then I want to clean and jerk over 400 pounds around like one eight, over, just over 180 yeah. on the platform. And if I did that at a small meet, or if I did that on the biggest stage, Right. That is my fulfillment at the moment. That's what I'm chasing, which is just different. You know, yeah. like I see a yeah, lot of yeah. people go in it because they want to win this. I want to be this title, yeah, I want to do this. For yeah. me right now, it's like, Jazz can tell you, I'm in the box every day going, these are the two numbers that I want to hit. This is what I'm every day working towards. Yeah. I can't, can wait till I hit them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for me right now, it's a strength-based thing, personally, I feel like. Like, I'm a very powerful athlete. I came from like a sprinting background and like technique is getting better week on week. But it's like now I'm, I'm finding that my strength, you know, compared to like these top guys in the category is just like, when, when I'm talking like raw strength, yeah. is my limited factor. And what category are you in? 89 kilos. Okay. Yeah. Who, who is in that? What male uh, UK? No one really. Isn't there that one like kind of Italian name guy? Yes. What's his name, Dominic or something? Or uh, what? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Is he in 89 or is he? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But it's British like, British weightlifting is a mess, man. Oh, what's what's your best snatch? 145? 146. 146. You should work on one. Yeah, you should work on 147. Yeah. And then work on 148. And then yeah, work on 149. That, I feel like that's where motivation is such a different thing for different athletes. Yeah. You're like, I want to take this step, this step. Yeah. I've known for like the last six months that's where my physical thing. numbers can be. Who motivates you? What motivates you? <laughs> Very deep, isn't it? Um, like, what do you see? What characteristics in somebody do you see? And you're like, wow, I need to be better. I just feel like sometimes for me, it's like hardworking, but then vulnerable. They're the two characteristics. I feel like every human being has a vulnerable side. And I feel like you should expose it at times to show that you're a real human. And yeah, I, mean, I like seeing that in people, but then I also like the, this is great. You can bring this up with Matt. I beat him at a go-karting. I also like the competitive nature of people. So like Matt Fraser, we went go-karting with him and I, he overtook me on the track, fair play, whatever, you know, but we were going for fastest lap of the day. I said it and he nearly dragged me back in with my neck to go again because he's that competitive just in life. And I, I'm not like that but I can envy that, you know, like, 
I reckon if you played him at hide and seek, he would want to win. And I don't know if it's true with Matt, but I feel like Matt's want to win inspired me, but also I feel like he had it in his head that he didn't want to lose. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that, press here for the full-length episode.